within uh, next few minutes let's just settle down uh, the place for the next session and before that we start the session let's just uh, introduce ourselves to each other so that it becomes more easier and more comfortable that what level and what uh, basics uh, we all share so uh, are you all uh, working as an ad uh, advocate practicing as an advocate or studying right now let me just ask you the first primary question just switch on your mics uh, oh, switch on your cams if you can just if you are at your comfortable places yeah good evening sir this is nagender i'm from hyderabad hi nagender uh, i completed my llb in the year 2019 i am looking i am much interested in the real estate law okay. uh, before before taking this course i have practiced under a under senior one and a half year and, I, and later i will left that to practice and again i jump into the bpo sector job to sustain my financials okay 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 so uh, others what about others sir this is harsh what's this side yes friend lawyer so i have been uh, doing my practice as a cs but i think drafting has a very great scope and um, so i need not go for sanad or become aor with my cs membership also i can undertake drafting assignments so that was the reason for joining this job correct as an aor that's uh, that's another aspect uh, that's your per personal opi uh, opinion and your personal wish if you wish you can just sit for the exams uh, if you have completed your five basic years of practicing as an advocate uh, you have to go and uh, serve as a one year training under a registered aor who is at least having a 10 plus years of experience so uh, that's another thing okay it's always good that additional qualifications they are always you know welcomed in our stream because we never know from what end we need to argue yes others the reason for joining this real estate session today i just want to know from you all that what is your basic what you want to grasp from this session from this fifth fortnight session that will be conducted here and after good evening sir good evening Hey Sharma I am a fourth year law student a uh, fourth year law student Shardar University the reason that I've joined this course is that I was having a discussion with my professor and she had actually let me know that uh, some practical courses will definitely help you and give you an advantage to increase the what we say increase the an advantage of in your uh, CV which can further let you get good internships and further a uh, good job in the future okay yes others Good evening, sir. Uh, this is Swagata from Odisha. Sir, I have completed my five years integrated law in two thousand twenty-three, and I'm looking for a practice. So I just want to enrich my practical knowledge through this drafting uh, course. Okay, more or less. Uh, I presume that people over here are about to, you know, complete their graduations. about to get enrolled as a lawyer and uh, some of you are already into practicing law correct so if we go with the basic definitions basic terms so legal terms it will be easy to all of you to understand or there is someone who is just fresh draw graduate first year second year student over here Hi sir, my name is Adarsh. Uh, I'm second year law student, sir. So I mean, I've not, I don't have much knowledge about the legal terminologies. Okay. Okay. I myself am a practicing lawyer. I graduated in 2013 from Delhi University. Since then, I have been practicing in Delhi, Delhi NCR, and whatever forums I get opportunity to appear. prior to that i was also engaged with a senior counsel in honorable supreme court over there for like a decade i was a part of that chamber also but recently i disengaged from over there not uh, practically but physically i am disengaged from there and i have started my own individual litigation career more focus today on this course would be more on the practical aspects i will not be giving you or i will not be taking your sessions like 
we'll be reading something, we'll be going with the case laws, we'll be doing something. No. I'll be sharing what experience, personal experience I have gathered from this particular personal ex uh, years of experience. What I gathered, I'll share it with you. Secondly, practical things that will be upfront. So it would not be like reading your barracks or reading some books or commentaries or putting you with some case notes or some pointers. <coughs> so let's be very practical. The basics will be discussed over here. Correct. I'll try to put you to certain facts that why this aspect has come, what is the reason behind this. So we'll be discussing those. Secondly, we'll be majorly focusing on the real estate pleadings. What are the pleadings? Pleadings are from the day one, whatever transaction you are dealing, sale, purchase, lease, licensing, license, franchisee, whatever things are associated with the term real estate. Whatever the drafts are, documents are formed over there, drafted over there, we'll be dealing with that. How we'll be dealing? We'll be dealing, what is the reason behind drafting a certain clause? What is the basic understanding to that? What law says? So we'll be doing it in a bit practical way. So should we start? Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. Just one uh, request uh, from my side is be more on a reverting side also. If there is anything which needs your, you know, reply or revert, just let me know so that at least I can also gaze from your answers or replies. At least things are gradually being deposited at your end. Correct? Now, yes. real estate. What is the basic meaning of real estate as per your common interpretation of law? Just forget about what law, what definition says. Just give me a basic definition. What real estate as per your appearance, as per your thought process, what is real estate? A corporate world. Uh, sir, uh, it includes uh, in relation to properties and lands real estate would mean uh, immovable property uh, governed by the act on which documentation i mean uh, with an owner let's just simplify immovable it. property of the nature <clears throat> real estate sale purchase let out these are the three things basic broader three aspects of real estate either you sale Either you purchase, either you rent. Correct? Yes, sir. So, what these three things in which sector? Either residential or it's a commercial. These are the two things. It can either be agricultural. Huh? It can also be agriculture. That, uh, see, real estate as on date we are dealing right now is see when it comes in terms of agriculture you all know that there are certain laws which says conversion property usage land usage other things real estate basically means sale purchase of your property that is immovable property in terms of residential rights and in terms of commercial purposes for example if you are purchasing on uh, office premises you are uh, here to purchase an apartment for residential purpose this is all which comes into your real estate broader definition now as a lawyer just for a moment just think about as a lawyer why will you be approached in this sector what are the basics when you will be approached for what are the basics that will be required from you why a client or a person will come to you when they have to make a sale deed or any kind of argument or contract about the so for registering those deeds Correct. for registering sale deed or for registering uh, rent agreements any discrepancies in agreements hmm? any Sir, discrepancies uh, in agreement in, in any discrepancies in contracts okay 
itself or getting a clear idea about the property that is to be purchased whether commercial or residential means whether the land is free from any encumbrances or there are any issues related to it uh, maybe pending any litigations that is not supposed to be uh, known by the general layman they need to uh, like uh, confront I means co communicate with a lawyer for that purposes if the property is uh, free for sale or acquiring to some extent correct let's just put it like this <laughs> mostly a real estate lawyer <clears throat> why a real estate lawyer because then a person specifically deals in these kind of cases we have to specialize somewhere correct you must have seen lawyers they know each and every aspect of law but they say that this is a lawyer who is in dealing uh, very good in uh, say uh, family law or this is a lawyer who deals very good in rent con rent controller he's a lawyer he's good in uh, say uh, criminal cases criminal trials so as a real estate lawyer you will be involved in drafting reviewing and proofreading the documents pertaining to sale, purchase, and rent. Now, first aspect is drafting. Why drafting is required? Everyone is investing money. Everyone wants to get safe, secure transactions. Everyone is apprehending loss or injury in near future. Today, if to I save that dollar. Over Yes. To safeguard our transaction by drafting. For example, today, if I have, okay. uh, I just came up to a uh, thought that I'll purchase a piece of land, but that land costs say odd ten lakh rupees. Will I straight away invest in that? No. What will I require? I'll require assurance so that if I make this investment today. Tomorrow, if any dispute arises pertaining to this piece of land or title or ownership of this land, at least my rights should be covered. Now, documentation. First thing that you will be doing in a real estate is drafting the documents. For example, someone comes to you and says, draft me an uh, agreement to sell. Correct? Now. Other aspect would be, for example, if I go on, uh, say, rent, I'll be coming to you that either draft me a rent agreement, lease agreement, or review my lease agreement or rent agreement, which has been given to me, if I'm a tenant. Yes or no? Now, yes, at this point, if your agreement, either if you are on the side of seller or on the side of buyer, if this agreement or if this document goes, say, for example, into hundreds of pages or 20, 30 pages with clause, sub clause, and again and again, minute details and everything, will the other party come in transaction with you? Just assume yourself, you are going to take on rent a property, a premises. That rent agreement goes into, say, or 20 pages. The first thought that will come into your mind will be, yes. What will be your first thought? That is too complicated. It's too complicated. Now, second thought that will hit your mind is that if it's too complicated, that means risk is high. This is a common interpretation. Correct. Isn't so? Thirdly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Third aspect would be that there are certain hidden hits. That it is so complex it's so minutely drafted that there must be something which is under the wheel that which is not clear to us right now but difficult to interpret correct so now first thing when you are drafting a document in terms of real estate or in terms of any legal document if you are drafting that applies to everything every kind of draft first thing to be kept in mind is that it should be simple to understand. Correct? Second is, it should have clarity. Correct? What is the clarity in these kind of real estate drafts? What is the property all about? What is the bifurcation? What is the 
कंस्ट्रक्शन वॉट इज द टोटल एरिया वॉट इज द टोटल कंसिडरेशन दिस इज ऑल वॉट द पर्सन नीड्स टू अंडरस्टैंड देन वॉट इफ एनी अनफोर्स इन इवेंट कम्स इन पिक्चर करेक्ट फ्यूचर प्रेसिडेंट्स आर ऑल्सो टू बी टेकन केयर ऑफ फॉर एग्जाम्पल if there is anything which is beyond the control of the person as an individual <coughs> in that case what would be the safety measure what is the risk cover if there is any kind of termination how there is an exit clause in this document correct these are the things which yes, the person sir. up hand in advance wants to know yes sir now how many of you understand what should be the legal way if there is any kind of dispute in real estate where will you approach if a person comes with yes. a dispute there can be a clause of arbitration mentioned in the agreement no that's true but i am saying today civil, civil courts okay civil courts sir will they file a suit sir lok adalat what just one by one let me just note your uh, answers yes one is civil civil suit लोक अदालत सिविल सूट लोक अदालत ओके सर इज देयर सम लिमिट दैट इफ यू आर ऑफ द डिस्प्यूट वैल्यू इज अप टू सर्टेन अमाउंट यू विल गो टू सेशंस कोर्ट इफ इट इज अ हायर वैल्यू देन यू विल गो टू हाई कोर्ट टू दैट एक्सटेंड यू आर लिटिल बिट रॉन्ग बिकॉज़ सेशन कोर्ट विल नॉट लुक इनटू द सिविल मैटर्स सेशंस कोर्ट ओनली विद रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ criminal trials in terms of payment we need to reach out to the senior court senior senior civil judge in the extent of payment extension of payment okay first let's for just, example, for let's example just, okay let's just let's just do a practical exercise today real estate and the problems associated with the transactions in real estate now i am a purchase buyer you are a seller what would be the probable broader disputes between two parties not honoring the uh, possession date the breach of contract not honoring possession that means delayed possession yes or misrepresentation misrepresentation scheduled disputes sir scheduled disputes delay in payment dispute in title delayed payments that comes in delayed possession sir adverse possession also adverse possession the dispute in title that comes in delayed okay disputes in title title disputes okay next what else property pending litigation ha huh? property pending litigation okay property not free from encumbrances next yes what else fraud so made by the seller of property hmm fraud so made by property uh, that comes uh, fraud comes under misrepresentation sir specific performance in terms of <coughs> in terms of registration <coughs> hmm in terms of registration okay now so broader disputes we have categorized why i am doing this exercise today is because if i straight away go to the drafting session you will be uh, unable to understand the things so basic should be clear first now where will you approach if any of this dispute arises today seven yes you seven. may be wrong you may be right just answer it no issue sir civil or else high court civil or else high court civil or high court civil court or high court yes consumer court consumer forum sir arbitration is involved arbitration arbitration so commercial court sir lok adalat also commercial courts 
सर इन टर्म्स ऑफ कमर्शियल प्रॉपर्टीज प्रॉपर्टी एनसीएलटी सर विद रेरा दैट्स कंपनी ट्रिप रेरा जस्ट अंडरस्टैंड वन थिंग earlier what was the procedure for example if there was a dispute in the position let's assume you applied for a <laughs> say flat builder did not adhere to the terms and conditions and your position is not given on the day which was specified in the agreement you quickly moved to the civil court yes sir correct yes then another advancement came it was consumer forums correct why consumer forums because we are home buyers we are consumers correct but what was the remedy that was given over there <laughs> injunctions they were curative for example position is not given court ordered okay make payments repayments correct with interest consumer forums either give them the position or give them the money this was the relief which was given yes sir so it can be said that all these forums all these judicial bodies quasi judicial bodies they were dealing with curative reliefs only curative means to just cure out the defects the damages to rectify them it was doing the curative part yes Now, sir what happened is by the introduction of rera now what is rera rera is real estate regulations isn't so now what is the nature of rera <laughs> you all are sitting for real estate today you have the basics about rera you know basics about Sir, rera to safeguard the interest of home buyer and promoting transparency transparency in real estate market okay so what you said now is that means rera came into picture for preventive measures isn't so civil courts sir dev and consumer forums they were giving you the curative relief only correct but by the introduction of rera it came up with a preventive measure that by this act you should not face difficulties of such nature so it was preventive in nature so there is a difference now correct you got yes, the difference sir. consumer forums correct curative <laughs> either give them the possession or give the money that is compensation correct no relief thereafter this is the only relief consumer forums used to give isn't yes, so sir. but there happened certain situations where disputes in terms of definition uh, uh, the person the complainant coming under the definition of a consumer was raised for example if i am a person i approached a builder for say a flat two flats correct what happened is position was not given i approached consumer for the first difficulty yes, was that first you prove that you are bona fide consumer the end user correct you are not buying just these properties for investment if you are buying it for investment then you go out of the ambit of consumers correct section 2d consumer protection act but by coming of rera what happened is irrespective of the person who is purchasing they said the person who is purchasing becomes the allottee now they are not looking into consumers they are not going into the definition and everything <coughs> they are saying the person who is applying for a real estate applying for a property immovable property comes under allottee 
definition is clear yes sir now sir can you repeat <laughs> just give me two minutes sorry i am saying when you go when a person when a home buyer or when a person who is purchasing the property immovable property had faced any of these problems delayed possession misrepresentation schedule disputes payments other things adverse possession and everything first thing if they used to go to the consumer forums was that they you they had to prove that they are bona fide consumers governed by section 2d correct then only <coughs> complaints will be taken cognizance of consumer forum will look into only the complaints which are filed by a consumer consumer <coughs> defined under section 2d <coughs> isn't so yes. now what is the definition of yes. consumer any example to that a person who is purchasing anything for his own personal use and utility best example for, is I'm, yes for his livelihood for his livelihood correct if i am purchasing if i am purchasing a vehicle <laughs> i am purchasing this vehicle for my own personal use correct i am the consumer yes, if i am purchasing a vehicle to sell it in the market i am not a consumer because i am not the end user correct so this is the basic now consumer forums and the other judicial bodies they were dealing only with the curative relief then rera came into the picture what rera did rera said let's just save god everything so let's just make preventive measures for who for the persons who are dealing in real estate now rera covers three aspects promoter allotee and authority correct who are the three parties over here broadly promoter allotee and authority authority correct now they have just outlined basics what promoters duties will be what allotees rights and duties are and what is the jurisdiction and ambit of authority correct <coughs> give me 2 minutes yes sir i'll just okay. just 2 minutes okay screen is visible to all of you i just shared the screen is the screen sharing visible to all of you no yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. now coming to the basics now <clears throat> you have the modules with you they have already been shared with the uh, coursework with on the respective uh, link page okay you have these modules now real estate involves buying selling building this is three things now coming to this what is the <laughs> consumer forums were prior looking to this now what is specifically mentioned in rera is just keep this in mind this is the basic uh, because you all should uh, get a rera act for yourself if you are further dealing uh, or if you further want to go into the litigation real estate uh, side aspect get uh, react i'll just give you the broader outline <laughs> now broader outline is you have to pre register yourself as a promoter with rera rera is an authority state wise rera is there constituted How many of you are aware about RERA? First, let me just. 
<coughs> ask you how many of you are aware about rera because if i am going to de- discuss about rera you need to at least have some basic first okay that means uh, majority of are aware but there are still people i'll just brief it for you the basic the intention the legislative intent behind rera was for mandatory registration of all projects with real estate regulatory authority in every state now it says in every state that means in every state there will be a rera state wise rera is there now how it is constituted that goes back into section 71 wherein it says power to adjudicate who will be the person concerned i'll deal with that later but i'm just giving you a brief now it says mandatory registration that means no project now understand it like this mandatory registration of all projects first thing when you come into real estate a project is floated in the mar- open market have you ever seen any advertisement yes, or crossed yes, any uh, layouts layouts or those hoardings yes sir What, yes, was the, what was the his, uh, prior, past way of uh, trading in this real estate they were real estate agents you used to go to that location physically verify the places go there there were agents they were brokers you go you used to meet them couple of meetings thereafter transactions moved further right. what was the approach now it says no we will remove all these anomalies it says mandatory registration of a project for example a builder today wants to construct or erect a building over here for residential complex of say uh, capacity for 1400 1500 families now before he starts before he even advertises this project rera says that there is a requirement that is mandatory mandatory registration what is this registration all about it says the project will be registered with rera why because public exchequer is involved isn't so people will apply to your project they will invest in your project their money is involved correct so this is mandatory requ- registration of all the projects who will register the project now the promoter the promoter who earlier used to get the land and used to start construction and then advertise it now what is the prerequisite prerequisite is that you, you have to mandatory register it prior to starting up of the project yes sir yes sir the basics in registration are first you will have to put all the documents before the authority what are the documents primarily broader documents land pertaining to land is pertaining to all the uh, provisions all the permissions and all the licenses taken care of all the certifications correct yes sir for example let's just assume one thing there's a builder he comes up with a project and says this project will be on this 1000 square area but this 1000 square area is a seismic zone what is seismic zone that it is prone to earthquakes and everything so building construction cannot be done over here correct but if there was no rera what would have happened he would have advertised people would have tendered the money yes correct yes sir misrepresentation would have occurred and thereafter it would have gone into multiple rounds of litigation but when rera comes into picture now what is the requirement first he has to come up with an application for registration of this project he will have to specifically give that okay let's just assume dlf green dlf uh, yamuna bank or whatever name they are putting to this project so they will have to register it first that this is the land this land has been duly uh, acquired from such and such owners or it has been marked to them by the authority permissions have been granted correct from all the departments now rera says 
whatever restrict whatever schedules or sanction plans you have given you cannot alter them earlier what was happening a builder or a promoter used to come he used to say that this will be project this will come up in 11 months let's just assume i'll give you this much of carpet area this much 2 bhk 3 bhk this will be the garage this will be all the gym area this will be common area and everything but what happened gradually when the construction used to start they used to deviate now rera says no deviation is not allowed whatever has been put in your documents while registration of this project you cannot deviate from this undertaking then what will happen if such situation comes it says then you have to get two third majority of the allottees allottees means the persons who have applied to this project if they are in two third in favor of that alienation or deviation then only you are allowed to go to that extent so just keep this in mind that in rera approved projects anything which is beyond the scope of an agreement which has been or allotment which has been granted to the allottee that can only take place if there is a majority of two third allottees in that favor correct otherwise strict interpretation of whatever has been put in the registration now how do you identify rera approved projects this comes into the question now for example a promoter registered his project he will have a website that is mandatory as per the rera go can you just uh, switch off your mic it's creating sound so as per rera it is mandatory that the promoter makes a website wherein he updates all these details and there is a provision there is a approval that says rera approved projects how many of you are aware about this or seen these projects wherein it has written rera approved projects yes sir they gave it their, they mentioned this in their advertisement so yeah sir is, like suvarna bhoomi is correct so what does what does this specific word mean rera approved project it means that the plans uh, must have been submitted by to the authority they have received the due approval from it the plan is registered there is a special number given so there are uh, it's a question of trustworthiness that there are there won't be chances of the cheating or uh, any irregularities just like a product a uh, eat table having an isi mark correct isn't so yes sir assurance yes sir <clears throat> real estate has changed a lot yes Correct. It, it gives an authenticity. Correct. It gives a feeling of se se sense of security that we are investing in a place where money is secure. Now, first thing that is clear now is for RERA approved projects, projects are to be mandatorily registered before the authority. Correct. Now, what is required for the registration of that project? That. prior registration means they will have to specifically give the details sanction plans what is the construction all about how it will come what all are the approvals they have already taken off correct so secondly it says all those rera approved projects money cannot be taken in advance from the allottees earlier what happened the builders used to take call for the money schedule payments were there yes, as per the agreement you were making payments and last payment was with it the day of registration the last payment will be made and registration will be done this was the way correct yes, but sir. in as per rera it says that the promoter will have to specifically make an escrow account escrow account is that he will make a separate account for this particular project all the money which has been collected from the allottees now who is the allotty that comes into the picture allotty is the original person who original or the person who has individually been in his or her name been marked or allotted the premises so allotty cannot be my agent or any subordinate correct 
So allottee has to be the person against whom the allotment letter has been there. Correct? Just keep this in mind. Now, it says escrow account. Why escrow account? It says whatever money comes from the allottees, that will specifically go into those accounts because these accounts will be subject to audit every six months. Correct? So now, what is RERA doing? It is supervising your details, your credentials. It is again auditing your bank accounts for that project. So first, your transaction is safe. Your project is safe. Tomorrow, this project cannot be stopped by any kind of litigation, any kind of objections because it has been RERA approved. Isn't so? Then only the RERA will give them the green <laughs> you start your construction. Second, yes, sir. Your, the allottee's money is safe now. Nobody can run away with the money because it's an escrow account which is subject to audit every six months or any special provision. Authority can audit that account. Yes, your sir. money, it says this money will specifically be utilized in raising the construction or making completion of project. Correct? Yes, so sir. money is safe. Your assurance is there. What next? It says even after these two, if any dispute arises, then there is a body. Yes, Apeksha. Sir, I have a doubt actually. In very layman's term, what is an escrow account? See, I'm a promoter right now. Correct? I came up with a project. Just name a project uh, for a hypothetical situation. Project ABC for residential township, correct? For that, we have identified a piece of land that is uh, already acquired from the government. Let's just assume this. Now, earlier, what was the business transaction? The promoter used to call money. The money used to go to his company accounts or the bank account which he has maintained. Was it so? Yes, sir. They just removed this. They said, no, the moment your registration of this project is with RERA, you will specifically open a new escrow account that is not in your name. That will be specifically for this particular project. So now from this account, the money that will come and the money that will be withdrawn, it will only be used specifically for this only project. You cannot balance it or you cannot you know adjust it for something else you got my uh, thing which i am trying to make you understand over here this money specifically will be for this particular project only because it's this account has been specifically opened and this account is specifically being associated with this project only yes ajitesh Yes, sir, it's clear. So now your money has been saved back. Isn't so? It further says, now all these things, they all are primitive or they are all preventive measures. Isn't so? This is all preventive. They are trying to reduce the risk. What risk? Risk of disputes. <laughs> what can be the dispute? Dispute can be to the possession. Dispute can be to the money, payments of transaction, uh, payments of funds. Dispute can be, uh, let's assume, uh, change in uh, alteration of uh, sanctioned plans. For example, promoter uh, assured you that two BHK will be given now. That two BHK was ten by ten uh, bedrooms were there. Now it has reduced some size of the bedrooms. So now you want to dispute that. So those things have already been taken care of for that you can specifically come before the body which has been specifically formed at the state level that is rera now <clears throat> section 31 talks specifically about this section 31 rera it says any complaint <clears throat> any person filing of complaints with authority or the adjudicating officer. Now, who will be the adjudicating officer? That comes under section 71. It says 
<clears throat> for the purpose of adjudicating compensation under section 12 14 and 18 and 19 these are the sections where compensation position and everything is claimed the authority shall appoint in consultation with the appropriate government one or more judicial officers as deemed necessary now who will be the judicial officer here who is or has been a district judge to be an adjudicating officer for holding inquiry in the prescribed manner after giving any person concern a reasonable opportunity to be heard so it says in any case even after taking these preventive measures if there is any dispute a complaint comes under section 31 to the concerned authorities the authority has complete power of a civil court now what are the powers to investigate and to pass necessary instructions and directions correct third thing is there is a provision of imprisonment here you must have not seen provision of imprisonment in civil courts if we file yes, in civil suit is there any provision that we can seek a relief of punishment imp imprisonment of the builder no, but no sir rera says specifically <clears throat> that there is a provision for imprisonment also fine along with the imprisonment of three years correct it has specifically made a procedure it's a procedural uh, thing has been made which says within 60 days you have to redress the complaint if beyond 60 days then you have to note the reasonable reasons for that so i am just giving you a gist of what rera is all about so now at least basic about rera is clear to all of you yes sir now sir here i have a question regarding who will maintain this could account this lot is no 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 that will be maintained by the promoter promoter because now promoter will be calling for the money and it says let's just put it like this how many of you have been a part to purchase of any say flat from a rare approved builder or anyone yes apeksha what is the procedure first you go you approach that builder you go to their websites you check what are the requ requisites what is the product what is the uh, property which they are giving what is the location where it is located what is the actual premises all about what is the ancillary things given in that property this is how you go there then first thing that is given to you is allotment letter now when they are giving you an allotment letter is there any structure that has already been raised by that time if it's a new project no correct there are <clears throat> there are this uh, exam uh, sorry there are these uh, uh, what do you call them structures uh, just to show you that this will be the exact uh, replica there are replica to that flat they just make one flat complete flat to just uh, put it to you that this is what you will be getting at say 13th floor 14th floor 10th floor they just narrate it like this isn't so but building is not yet started so it says application comes allotment is given at that time allotment rera says 10 percent of total project cost not beyond that earlier what was happening that they used to ask for money for example they used to say okay give us say 40 percent of the construction cost first then we'll uh, give you an allotment letter correct so there are sample flats sorry i forgot that there are sample flats they show you isn't so for example it's a huge land over here this is a uh, site approved land they have sample flats they'll say this is mig hig lig so one one flat each so these are sample flats you just look over there we'll uh and just uh either it can be from draw floats or we can just specify it if you want to uh, say east facing then this is the cost if you want terrace then this is the cost so they just put it like this rera says previous primitive techniques they will not prevail now where they will not prevail because real estate sector is huge now a further thing comes in it says any project just keep this in mind if you are uh, able to note it somewhere it says if a project is for a specified measurement that is 500 square yard below that 
if it's below that no registration is required now why 500 square yard is there can anybody just let me know that why a project which is equal or less than 500 square yard that doesn't require rera registration yes to make difference between uh, prop uh, and builder and uh, property seller see there are big giants and we have those people also who are individually working in this real estate contractors are there working on small small sector of sections of land for example say common in delhi right now is like people <clears throat> they are creating there are builders who are making say two three floors for say on 50 square yard 100 square yard 200 square this much is the plot size if everyone has to come under rera will these small contractors or builders be able to work no so it says any project which is more than 500 square or more than eight units there are there's a project say wherein 10 flats in a single uh, <clears throat> building is being raised or say nine then it's more than eight units then it becomes a commercial one it has to mandatorily come under rera it has to be mandatorily be pre-registered with rera if it's below that so traditional approach traditional aspect of working in real estate can work so for, to keep those people also in their livelihood this has been specifically held so now moving further yes sir so 500 yes. square yard <clears throat> so ye, uh, specifically kisi state ke liye ya har state ke liye? this is generally they have said i'll just uh quote you the exact uh, uh that uh section i'll just uh i just noted it for you all because see now you will be able to understand if each and every project has to be registered for example there are builders in our locality also you must have seen builder buyer agreements hote. Yes. this uh, or if you have a piece of land say uh, 100 square yard you go to the yes. builder you say that raise a building over here four floor five floor let's just do one thing give me three floors two floors yours all the cost of construction is yours i'll give you the land correct yes sir. Now, if every project has to be registered then will this sustain this kind of technique or this type of methodology of living this will not sustain so they are saying when it's on a larger scale so for that they have bifurcated it for land areas 500 square yard and if there are more than eight units then it will be coming under mandatory registration Yes, sir. So eight units means eight uh, floors or eight flats. Eight units means eight different those uh, properties. Like if it's a five floor, that means one, two, three, five properties are now there. So it is still per under floor. per floor. Yes. And so you said um, if any project is beyond five hundred yards or eight. if it is yes. I just got five hundred yards, so it Six. is about yes. the area where it is going to be built or the square feet of where the, the project is going to be built it okay. says prior registration that chapter 2 of uh, rera act 16 says uh, section 3 subsection 2a what does it talk about it says prior registration of real estate project with real estate regulator authority notwithstanding anything contained in this subsection 1 no registration of real estate project shall be required where the land area of land proposed to be developed does not exceed 500 square meters or the number of apartments proposed to be developed does not exceed eight inclusive of all phases for example there are 100 100 square five plots and on all those five there are only eight units eight apartments are going to be constructed then no requirement till this limit is required to come under this rera correct Now, there is one important aspect now. 
what does it mean it says bar of jurisdiction that is section 79 of your red act it says no civil court shall have jurisdiction to entertain any suit or proceeding in respect of any matter which the authority or the act or the adjudicating officer or tribunal is empowered by or under this act to determine and no injunction shall be granted by any court or other authority in respect of any action taken to be in pursuance of power conferred by or under this act. So it says, according to this section, civil courts are barred from entertaining any dispute in respect of a matter which the authority is adjudicating. Now, for example, if there is a RERA approved project, Possession is not given. You cannot go to civil court. But if there is a limit that was 500 square and eight apartments, if it's below that, you can specifically go to the civil courts for possession, for damages in specific performance. Just put it like this. I purchase a property. You are a uh, builder. I came to you, I approached to you, I said that grant me this floor. That floor is, for example, say uh, 200 square yard floor, uh, uh, carpet area. Now what happens is on the date of possession, you deny me that position. This has not been registered under RADA because it doesn't fall under that. This project, the development project doesn't fall under RADA. What is the remedy left to me? The remedy left to me is civil court. Civil court. So I'll specifically go to the civil court. I'll say either grant me position mandatory injunction that he should not alienate this property to anyone declaration i should be declared owner and what damages so i can go to the civil court in that case but if i have booked for example uh, you just gave a example of some uh, builder project that was already there if i have been allotted say Pro, uh, tower 1, flat 10. This has been allotted to me. This is a RERA approved thing. Can civil court come into the picture now? No. no. Due, no. Due to jurisdiction. Because there is a bar of jurisdiction. Why there is a bar of jurisdiction? Because there is, by the enactment itself, the power has been vested only to the authority not to the court the moment this project comes under rera registration in section 3 the civil court's jurisdiction is barred correct okay so now you will say what happened to the complaints which were filed in consumer forum prior to rera so for them a trigger window was opened that if matter has not been proceeded further or if it's at its initial stage the complainant over before the consumer forum if that project now falls under radar or by any virtue of that act the dispute falls under radar they with permission can withdraw their complaints for consumer forum and go before the radar why before radar because one there is immediate hearing that is 60 days second procedures are set that everything is already on record correct third there is a provision of imprisonment and fine both so there is a rate of success is more correct can a builder in a rare approved project now claim that money was not given to me on time or I got insolvent when he already has an escrow account. No. You answered. No, sir. So this is how your preventive methods as per RERA comes into picture. Just get a RERA act for yourself. <clears throat> it will not be specifically in your drafting session, but I'll just give you certain provisions of RERA. State-wise RERA is there. You can, but the basics, they remain same for all the states. I'll just make a note to those that these are the relevant sections. Just go through them. At least you will be able to understand that how RERA mechanism works. Tomorrow onwards, 
will be starting the drafting of those contracts those agreements those arrangements which are in this real estate i wanted to address you on this radar because what happens is now if i specifically come up with the conclusion that okay let's start drafting a contract of say sale uh, sale deed now if i say in case of any termination that sale deed will only be for those primitive uh, uh, property dealers or property transactions where you are just purchasing a small set of property from say any uh, private uh, dealer but nowadays real estate has expanded a lot there are projects everything is becoming project based in metropolitan also now yes sir for that aspect at least you should have a basic of rera what rera talks about what is it all about correct so i have just given you a sum and substance summary of this that it is uh, preventive now why is it preventive because prior registration is there then provision of imprisonment is there so there is a fear they can uh, bar uh, they can uh, blacklist the promoter correct now 